Hello everyone, we have a bit of a different episode for you this time. For this release I decided to cram together The Lords of Midnight and Doomdark's Revenge. The reason for this is that both games are built on the exact same mechanics with some tweaks to the storyline. These games are the brainchildren of Mike Singleton and were originally released for the ZX Spectrum in 1985. Wait a second, Vincent, I hear you ask. Weren't you doing these chronologically? Well, I was. But good old games decided to list them with the date of their own release on their website and not the original one. I guess that one's my bad. Now these are epic fantasy games that combine aspects of global warfare and graphic adventures. They were very well received from the beginning, and I can vouch for the fact that they still garner a cult following. Seriously, if you go look for yourself wherever you may find Let's Plays and Reviews, you will see an avalanche of fans praising these games to the high heavens. It's insane. The game has you take control of four different characters right from the get-go. Aragorn, Legolas, Gandalf and Frodo. Wait, no. Uh, Luxor the Moon Prince, Corleth the Fey, Rorthron the Wise, and Morkin, Luxor's kid. There's two ways that you can go about winning this epic adventure. One has you control the characters traveling around the map and assembling the last alliance of elves and men to take the fight to Sauron. It, uh, I mean, recruiting the Fey, mages, and free peoples to take the fight to Doomdark and take his citadel of Ushgarak. The other way to win is to take Frodo to Mount Doom where he must destroy the One Ring at... <sighs> I mean, you must bring Morkin to the Tower of Doom where he must destroy the Ice Crown. God. You move and interact with the world during the day, when you can fight minor skirmishes, and when you select nighttime is when Doomdark will take his turn and battles involving armies get resolved. One thing you must keep in mind is that Luxor is the carrier of the Moon Ring, a bit of jewelry that lets Doomdark always know his location and send armies for him. Well, that's about it for the bases you need to know about these games. So how did I fare? Well... So I gave Lords of Midnight a shot after reading up a little bit about the game. I mean, it's kind of complicated. And uh, needless to say, it didn't go well. When the game started, I looked at my available party members and checked out the map to plan a route. My plan going in was to recruit the peoples of the free and have Morkin heroically destroy the Ice Crown with some improvised guerrilla tactics since that seemed to me like the easiest way to win the game. I made all my characters follow Luxor so I wouldn't have to bother moving them all individually, which I guess goes a little counter to what the game wants you to do but my brave group of adventurers was ready for anything. I figured I'd head to the mage tower southeast of our starting position to try and recruit a mage and possibly some more dudes in the citadel of guard. Looking south, I thought, oh, those, those are some cool dragon statues. I moved forward and they weren't statues at all. I was immediately and unceremoniously killed by dragons three minutes in with my very first move of the game. It wasn't my proudest moment. I started my second session, and this time I wasn't fooling around. I looked at the map to get my bearings, had everyone follow Luxor, and the adventure was off. I decided to sidestep the dragons this time. I made it to guard and managed to get Luxor to recruit some soldiers. I also found the Lord of Guard, who commanded his own little army and made a nice addition to the team. I felt quite proud of myself that I had made it farther into the game than last time and I was actually doing something. My next stop was the nearby Mage Tower. I hoped Rorthron the Wise would be able to recruit another mage here, although either I messed up or the tower was empty. There was no magical firepower to be had, I couldn't add another mage to our growing army and so we moved on. I looked around the southeastern villages a bit, trying to recruit some more soldiers to our cause, but was mostly unsuccessful. It looks like you can garrison some of your soldiers in these towns, and I assume to protect them from Doomdark, but there were no troops that could be levied off of them, so I figured, you know, screw it, let Doomdark have the southeastern towns if that's what he wants. I made my way back north, gathering soldiers from where I could, and with each passing day, Doomdark laid siege to more and more places, as the nighttime screen clearly indicated. I found some artifacts that I didn't quite know what to do with. 
One thing that I had read about was that Corleth the Fey would be able to recruit other Fey from wooded areas, so I tried to make my way to some woods hoping to find some magical pixie allies. The armies of Doomdark were already in the center of the map, which I thought was quite rude. I tried to sidestep them like I did with the dragons, because I seriously doubted my armies would be able to stand up to a stiff breeze, let alone over a thousand mounted warriors. I made it to Thrall, and I could see woods in the distance, but the armies of Doomdark had me pretty much surrounded. I decided to make my stand in the village of Thrall, maybe I could clear a path to the woods, but that didn't really work. Doomdark's armies decided to encircle me, and the siege of the village of Thrall had begun. I lost nearly all my soldiers in the first skirmishes, and couldn't leave the village with the battle unresolved. My generals fought to the last man, slaying quite a few enemies of their own, but Doomdark basically killed them in a single night, except for Luxor's useless child. Father and son stood over the village of Thrall to make their last stand. Could this be the moment where the bonds of family would overcome the forces of darkness? Well, as the last night passed, Doomdark killed Luxor's good-for-nothing son, as a final screw you, the game crashed my system with a persistent screen of Morkin's death that just mocked my final failure. Even though I terminated the process, I had no choice but to restart my system completely, which is one of my triggers. So here's my final thoughts. These games, though epic and intricate, aren't really the type of thing I would normally go for. The fact that this was made in 1985 is quite impressive, however. To the question, should you play it, I say... If you like global warfare games with some turn-based RPG elements, yeah, go for it. I, for one, will close this chapter of the series, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>